Failure is often a learning experience. Hopefully you gain some understanding of what went wrong and avoid the same mistakes in your next venture. Other times, what you had in mind gets altered beyond your initial concept, and the idea gets lost somewhere in the editing process, leading to an adventure that doesn't know its purpose. That's the theme of today's remaster, X6, Quagmire, by Marl Rasmussen. It was supposed to be the next Isle of Dread, but between the writing and the editing, the plot was reduced to bare bones, causing the module to be regarded as one of the worst in the Beckme line. This is one of the two modules that were retconned out of existence with the release of Champions of Mystara. Still, there are some elements you can use in your adventure. Welcome to Mystara. I'm Mr. Welch, and no giggity. But before we get started, I have to return a favor. Some changes and improvements are coming to Welcome to Mystara, including the return of Mad Musings, and Patrick E. Pullen is helping me make the channel even better than it was previously. I know, like that's possible. But I will never stop striving for perfection. I intend to be more perfect than everyone else. To thank Patrick, I strongly recommend you check out his new anthology book, Dark World Legends of Lorna, on Kickstarter, featuring works from writers like Gene Rabe and Richard Nock of Dragonlance fame, among others. It's already fully funded, but he's added additional bonuses like his Dark World Adventure Terror at Merkwell for Roll20, and a chance to play D&D with some of the authors. These include Richard Lee Byers and Donald Bingle of Forgotten Realms fame. The book is available in PDF, softback, hardback, and you can't go wrong if you're looking for a new read from some of D&D's veteran authors. Fair warning, the D&D game with the authors has limited space, so make sure you grab all the remaining seats to spite all the people who made fun of you for being a geek back in high school. But now, being a geek is cool, and they're going to try to show that they were geeks all along, even though they couldn't tell a D8 from a D10 or even spell Catopolis when they were making fun of you at the lunch table. So grab the book and join the game, just to show all the people who picked on you all those years ago that doing your own homework and not paying other people to do it means you can afford luxuries like Kickstarter stretch goals. I mean, sure, all that homework money did pay for a lot of D&D back in the day, but we're adults now and we don't hold grudges anymore, right? So check out Dark World Legends of Lorna. The link is in the description. Where was I? Oh, that's right, Quagmire's technical details. Quagmire is the sixth expert module, written again by Merle Rasmussen in 1984. He is best known as the author of the Top Secret RPG, which was previously reviewed on this channel. Steve Peregrine did the cover art, and Jeffrey Butler got the credit for the interior art. It's a 32-page hex crawl for levels 4 through 10, but as you soon will see, the levels don't mean much because you can plug and play any number of monsters to adjust the difficulty. The module opened up the known world with the addition of the Serpent Peninsula, though the addition to canon would be replaced in the Champions of Mystara. Quagmire is best known for the story behind the module rather than the adventure itself, as game historian John Peterson covered the creation of the module in an article called The Making of a 1980s D&D Module. The article, which I will link, details the module's initial presentation, called Frozen Burial Mounds of the South March. Then it takes you to the process where the adventure then turns into Quagmire of the Swamp King, and then just simply Quagmire. The initial concept was a race against time, with the city sinking and the party having to transport its population to another location to save them. Unfortunately, TSR had just had its first major shakeup, and Quagmire went into development hell while Rasmussen worked on other projects. Frank Mincer gave a lot of advice on improving the module in his rather precise and clinical style, just like he did when he gave the Mastara Player's Guide a once-over. The module was revised several times before it was released, but by that time, Rasmussen had been released from TSR and yet another one of their shakeups. The book that hit shelves is the one we are talking about right now. Quagmire is a mess. You're not going to find many people who have read through the adventure and not come up with the same conclusion. It's an almost entirely wilderness module with two routes to the city that gives the module its name. One through the swamp directly north of it, or you can take a ship from your starting spot to your destination if you want to go that route. Quagmire did introduce a lot of elements into Mistara that would be adopted and expanded upon later. This is the first appearance of the city of Slagovich. It has a weather chart, though it uses real-world months instead of the Mistaran calendar. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the rather expansive Wandering Monster charts includes mules, the offspring between horses and donkeys. Those mules. The same mules that are sterile. And you certainly don't have herds of them wandering outside in the wilderness. When I did my original review of the module, Anne Dupuis, a TSR alumni and noted equestrian, made a point to bring that bit of a zoological impossibility to my attention. And I didn't forget, so if you're running this module, make the mules donkeys. Quagmire involves three different sh giant shell cities for the characters to discover. Obviously, the namesake of the module is the city they're looking for. But there is also Thanopolis and the Sunken City, which was originally named Yaftalum. Sound familiar? To save space in the book, all three have the exact same floor plan. Each city has exactly 49 rooms, which isn't a lot of space for a city when you think about it. When you get to a specific room, you look at the entry and check out which one of the cities that you're in, and the module tells you what's in the room. Yes, it saves a lot of space, but it has no originality. There's no reason all three cities should have the same floor plan. 
They're not even cities, they're just tall buildings. The module says Quagmire is a significant trading post in this region, but only a few dozen people live there. To annoy DMs even further, the sunken city has no plot hook. The characters have to stumble across it, and it's not even visible at night. There's a chance they could sail right past it and never even notice. If you do guide them to the city, you're going to need to get the rules for underwater adventuring from War Rafts of Kron or the Sea Peoples, because those rules don't exist in Beckme yet. If the party wants to take the sea route, the Dungeon Master is going to need to find a way to challenge them. There are very few planned encounters in Quagmire, and almost all of them are for the land route. It suggests strongly hampering the party with bad weather or something similar to try to slow them down, but you can only throw so many storms at a party before they think you've just got it in for them. Of the planned encounters, approximately two-thirds of them are for the parties taking the land route. Almost half of the random encounters for the sea route are just there to destroy their ships and make them walk or force them to take life bolts to Quagmire. The sea route is by far the safest and fastest of the two ways to get to Quagmire, and it's up to the DM to make it interesting, or else it's going to be less of an adventure and more of a taxi service. You can sink the ship, but that's a boring option and the party's going to expect it. Having a Kraken randomly show up and drag the ship under the waves is a bit stereotypical. This option doesn't give you much to work with, but then again it doesn't give you much to work with at all. The land route is by far the more exciting route, as in stuff actually happens without you accidentally stumbling across it. It's also slower and more treacherous, which is going to make the players not want to take it. The path introduces the characters to not just Slagovich, but also Sea Camel and Mule Beach, two towns on the coastline. There's not much about these three cities in the book, as half their entries are cut and paste from each other. Repetition is a central theme in Quagmire, and it shows in many of the entries. The characters taking the land route just follow the trail, hit all the ambushes and random encounters, deal with multiple illnesses, spoiled provisions, and quite a few classic Mastaran monsters. Oh, and several bad guys performing a public service. After the seventh day of making saving throws against tropical diseases, the party will start to wonder why they didn't take the sea route. Going this way has the reputation of being a slog, and for good reason. Then you have the problem with the triple cities. They're identical in layout, and don't think the players won't notice that. Especially if you have an old-school mapper. The cities have very little in terms of scale, and Quagmire is a major trade stop in this region with a population of 50 people. There's nothing to showcase these are actual cities. Instead, just dungeons that need to be cleared out room by room. When the characters reach the end of Quagmire, the Dying Chief tells them that they are now the leaders of his people, and they need to go to Thanopolis. That means the characters are now in charge of 42 starving civilians and tasked with dragging them across 400 miles of dense jungle or fitting them on a small ship and sailing around the island where the characters will need to carve their way through Thanopolis so the few survivors can starve to death there. And no, they don't want to go anywhere else, despite pretty much any place other than Thanopolis having food. The sunken city is filled with hostile mermen, without any reason given why they are automatically hostile. That's just an underwater dungeon with monsters to kill. Quagmire is not a good adventure. It has little to do, and it leaves much to the DM to fill out just for the characters to have an adventure. Granted, people complain about 5th edition leaving too much for the DM to do for an adventure to work. Still, this module is a perfect example of how that's been a problem since the early days of D&D. The maps showcase how little there is in the Serpent Peninsula, with just a few towns to the north and some scattered settlements in the southern section. The party's going to be walking for miles or sailing for days with little to do. One major problem is this area is enormous compared to the Isle of Dread, which had more encounters in a smaller area. Quagmire gives you a letter with instructions on where to go, punctuated with a sense of urgency. There's little incentive to explore. This module was the first adventure to be entirely rewritten by another release. Champions of Mastara kept the map, but threw out all the contents, except for Slagovich, which got a rewrite of its own. Mule Beach and Sea Camel were literally wiped off the map. Actual nations took the place of the empty islands in the original. Yavdalim went to, from the name of the sunken city to a nation of diviners that took up most of the original map. The three spiral cities were removed entirely, and towns that actually resembled places where people would live replaced them. Bruce Hurd, the line editor of Mastara, turned Thanopolis into Tanakumba and claimed that the original name was given to it by Minrathadian merchants. He also turned it into a real town with a sustainable population. Then he placed the events of Quagmire in Mastara's distant past. So what's the point of a module that doesn't have much to do and was so poorly received that its own editor rewrote the entire region? If nothing else, it has many things you can steal for your own adventures. Don't think of this as an adventure module, but a source book that you can pillage ideas from. It does give you three versions of the same dungeon, so if you need a quick module for your characters, just have them run across one of the shell cities. The encounter charts are rather detailed, so crib them if you want an adventure running through a jungle. 
Quagmire doesn't skimp on environmental rules, including weather charts and even rules for things like quicksand or worse. You can get the module for very little, it's not in great demand if you want an original copy, and the POD doesn't cost much at all. Despite its poor reputation, Quagmire did start to tie the world together. It's one of the first modules to reference locations from other adventures. Specularum, Pramayama, and Sind, and the Isle of Dread all get a mention as possible starting points for the characters. The module has a focus on caravans and similar, something that later gazetteers like Derrickon and Minerth had focused on. That's Quagmire. I think it was number six on my worst Beckme module list for all the reasons I've mentioned. It's got lots of nothing with little to explore. Several sections of the module, cut and paste text, and the identical shell cities are some of the worst dungeon designs from the TSR era. Still, it's not expensive if you want one for your collection. Next up on the remaster list is Savage Coast, which is a lot like Quagmire, only with less things to do. Until then, remember, you should always do your own homework.